All right, people, what is up and welcome back. So check out what we have on this table right here. Five nice flounder, all over 15. The smallest one is 15 and a half. And then right here, no one's best flounder yet, which is 18. So we had an awesome day flounder fishing yesterday. And we're gonna roll some clips from that, let y'all see what we were doing. And then we will come back, meet y'all right here to show you how to clean them up and then go in the kitchen and cook up uh, an awesome meal. So stay tuned and let's get right into it. right at 15 but or 14 but wasn't gonna keep them anyway a little small for me all right next cast after and i just got another one we let him eat within like five casts so in live shrimp on a jig head get the measurement he is yep 16 17. i'm gonna go throw him in the cooler and then uh we're gonna try to catch some more and i'm gonna grab the gopro so feeling good guys Let's see if we can get into them all right no one just got bit yeah no one you're throwing a gulp right no shrimp oh no one just switched off to shrimp got him Hang down. Flip him, flip him. I mean, he's a keep, but we'll probably let him go. What do you think? He's just at 14, I guarantee. Give him the old measure. Guys, the new flounder law is going to effect pretty soon. Yeah, that right fine. there would be a 14 just under, because the new law is going to be 15. So he's legal, but no point. I ain't mean, no one is on again. He just got bumped. Set the hook on him. He got him. Little. Hey, better than nothing. Oh, yeah, it is a little chip. Guys, that is four flounder that we've caught out here, and we've literally been here not even 10 minutes. Guys, I just got bumped. This is some of the best flounder fishing. Oh, out of his mouth. I didn't let him eat it long enough. Oh, it was a hard bump, too. Y'all check that out. Bit my shrimp in half. Oh, I should have let him eat. I mean, it was a bump, but he kind of started moving with it, so I don't know. No one got bit again. He's on. Go ahead. Got him. Little one? Yeah. Yep. Bunch of little guys in here, but there are a few keepers. I mean, we all three have a keeper in the box. Over 15. All right, we got another one. Measure them. 15. Dude, no way. Caught a redfish. Check that out, guys. Redfish. So now I got flounder, redfish. All I need now is a trout. And I'll have a uh, miniature slam. I don't know if I'm going to catch a speckled trout in here. It's not really the type of place. Oh, there he is. Beautiful fish. All right, I just got bumped right here. I'm gonna set the hook on him. Oh my gosh. That was 100% of flounder too. Cause I was going, oh yeah, look. I should let him eat guys. Bit my shrimp in half. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Cast it out, told no one do you see that current? And sure as heck, there was one sitting right on the edge of that current. Might be a crab, it feels weird. No, oh, it's a fish. Flounder. Little guy. Oh dude, 
Look at the holes in this one. He's all beat up. Man, guys, he looks like he's been bit before. This is, all, this is, I mean, it sucks for him, but. Yo, look at that. Look at that. He's been beat up before. So this is actually probably a legal flounder, 14 inches. Although, you know, like I said, the laws are going to change here in September, I believe, to 15. And I don't keep 14s anyway. You guys, so we've caught a bunch of fonda here, but we've also caught more plastic bags than anything. Y'all check this out. That's just trashy. All right, I got one. Oh, are you joking me? Oh, I did not have a bag. Like, look, my shrimp is cut. I might have had one and a bag, but it wasn't just a bag. Oh my God, he was like literally Dude, did you see him? He was like an inch deep. Whenever I pulled him, did you see all the mud fly off? Yeah. Little small guy. I'll let him go. Smallest flounder of the day. Right there is a chip, if I've ever seen one. Well, we all got one within four casts, five casts. I gotta do one. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, we're recording over here. No one got one. He's gonna let him eat. Tell you, you got a snag, dude. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, no one. That is a pretty good one. Oh, oh my gosh. No one got a real good one. Guys, no one got a really, really good flounder. Go over there. Walk. But just keep it tight. Tara, watch out for my rod. I mean, dude, this is a big one. He slipped your drag way out over there. I think it's pretty big. Keep it tight. It has to be, dude. Uh, no, it's big. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. Okay, rocking, walking down the rocks. I mean, oh, it's mud right here. Straight mud. All right. Oh, he's barely hooked. I got mud all over my face. All in my mouth, but it's worth it because that right there is a doormat. Yeah, that's like a 1920, dude. I knew it was big when he pulled it. Look at my, I'm covered in mud. I got him, dude. My hands in his mouth. I'm just gonna walk up. And Taylor got one too, dude. Oh, that makes a one man limit right there, boys. Nice. All right, no one said you had a good one. Desperate times call for desperate measures. This fish ran all the way around right here and went up on this little, <coughs> so my nose in my mouth. Went up on this little muddy platform or muddy little beach area right behind us and just stuck himself there. So that's a good keeper flounder. I'm covered in mud, but it was worth it to get this voice fish. This is probably like one of your biggest flounders. Definitely PV. Definitely his biggest. So it was worth it. Anyways, good job, Nolan. We're gonna throw this fish in the box. Well, we're gonna get a picture. Then throw him in the box. All right. Well, Nolan was unhooking his and taking a picture. By the way, let's get in the video. Good job, Nolan. Anything to say? PB right here. Hey. 18 inch. Nice. While he was doing that. My line went tight over here. I don't know if that's a flounder. It's a crab. All right, so we came out here, and between the three of us, we ended up with a uh, one-man limit, five fish, all above 15. Usually, I won't even keep them if they're at 15, and all these are pushing 16. Uh, well, except for this one. This one, what was it? 18. Yeah, this is Nolan's, his PB right here. This is 18. This one's about 17, and then these are all pushing just over 15 and a half, close to 16. So we're going to throw these in the cooler, and then we're going to go to another place. Pretty much done on the flounder to, for today. Not going to try to target them anymore. So we're going to go and see if we can target some trout. And uh, we came over here because the wind was super bad. Whenever we stopped by our first spot, the wind was just killer, blowing horrible. Straight out of like the southwest, and uh, we couldn't even fish there. We couldn't. There was no way we were going to be able to cast. And it ended up being really cool because we came out here and then look at this. Made the best of the conditions that we had, and it turned out great. So let's go to the next spot. Well guys, we just pulled up to the next spot. We are on the back end of a low tide here, and it is absolutely packed with people fishing. So that one has completely laid down. Whenever we were here earlier, it was blowing like 15, so that's where we went to the other spot, which ended up doing pretty good. Caught a whole mess of flounder, as y'all saw. So now we're out here. Um, hopefully we'll be able to get some trout before the tide just completely stops and before that sun goes down. So stay tuned, and let's see if we can hop in this water and find anything to tug on the line. My shrimp is going nuts. I'm on. There we go. That seems not big. 
maybe a little speck or sandy. A little speck, yeah. And there's a slam. Yes, there is a slam for the day. Finally. <clears throat> Not a big slam, but it's a slam. Miniature slam. Anyways, guys, let me know if y'all experience the same thing. For speckled trout, I think that they, sh obviously they shake their head, right? We all know that. But it's almost like you can tell the difference between a speck and a sand right when they hit, even if they're the same size. Because a speckled trout feels like its head is shaking and a sand trout feels like their tail is shaking. If that makes any sense. Let me know if any of y'all know what I mean. Like it feels like a sand trout, like their tail is shaking really, really quick. And a speckled trout shifts their head going back and forth. All right, guys, welcome back. I hope you all enjoyed watching that. And if you did, please make sure to go down, drop a like, leave a comment and subscribe. But for now, let's get right into the cleaning part and then we're gonna go in the kitchen and uh, stay tuned if you wanna see what we're gonna whip up in there. So there's a bunch of different ways to clean a flounder, but for what we're cooking today and today's purpose, we're just gonna flay them out. So you get four flays, two on top, two on bottom. Uh, if you were gonna stuff it, you know, you just take the scales off, cut the head and uh, take the backbone out. But for today, we're just gonna show you how to flay. So a flounder, well, first we're gonna start by cutting the head off. Super simple. Go right here under these two fins that are on the belly and find the other fin. Slippery fish, by the way, which sucks. Just cut. Line up around that, down to the head. And once you get this far, you just twist it off. Maybe cut from the top a little bit. And there we go. Flounder has no more head. Throw that away. And then that's pretty much all the guts are out with that. You can pull them out, as y'all can see. So now we're going to start cleaning them, or now we're going to start flaying them. Flounder have a line in the middle of their back. I'll show you on the bottom right here. It actually has a visible line, that little bitty black or brownish line right there. So there's an indention too. You can feel it if you rub your finger across it right there. And all you're going to do is cut straight down that line because that line is literally telling you exactly where to cut on the fish. That is the backbone. So once you have it cut down to the backbone, run your finger in there. That'll help open it up, but it'll also let you know which side to start flaying on first. So the backbone sits up a little bit and it is on this side. So I'm gonna go down this side first. All we're gonna do, take our knife in there, turn it, break through the bones in the front, and then just start running it down. And you're just listening, it kind of sounds like a zipper. And the hardest part here, the only hard part, is getting through the bones in the front. So you might have to turn it around and break through them. Yep, there we go. Then we just continue doing what we were doing. And I go all the way out to the fins. Occasionally you'll get up above them like that, work them back down. Once you start hearing that noise, I don't know if y'all can hear that or not, but it kind of sounds like Velcro or something. That's how you know you're all the way through. And you just cut it off. All right there, with a perfect flounder fillet. Obviously we still have to take the bone that the right here around the ribs and then take the skin off, but that's ready to eat. So now we just do the same exact thing on the other side. So we have to go over that backbone a little bit. Take your time if you need to. That's the noise you're listening for. And then once you get through, you poke through, up that way. Perfect, that is probably the best one right there. Beautiful, white meat. Uh, actually has a little bit of a bluish tint to it, but really amazing. And then every once in a while, you'll feel a little bit of bones right here. Like there's a bone. That's just that fin that got stuck up in there. So we'll just pull that off. And uh, we just flip it over, do the same thing on the other side. Like I said, down the line, the flays on the back are going to be a tad bit smaller. Actually quite a bit smaller. They'll probably be half the size of the ones on the top. Yep, we're going to do the same thing on here. And then we'll see you on the kitchen to cook this up. So we're back here in the kitchen now. We got all of our flays right here. We're going to be making eight flays, so two fish looking good and uh, we're just gonna be making some garlic parmesan crusted flounder so i'm gonna go over the ingredients with y'all 
and then we're gonna start throwing it together. So right here, we have some Italian breadcrumbs. Um, I didn't have any, so I just used normal breadcrumbs and then Italian herb blend and mix it together. And then we have Parmesan cheese, okay? Garlic and lemon zest right there. You need the zest of one lemon and then some fresh lemon juice. And then of course, salt and pepper and my favorite, a little bit of paprika. And just for color, some green onions, because why not? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna throw this in the pan, all the breadcrumbs, all the Parmesan. Give it a nice, nice little mix. And then after this is mixed up, we're gonna take our fish, we're gonna put it in the egg wash and uh, put it in this, lay it on the pan, and then we're ready to throw it in the oven for about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Well, about 20 minutes, I think. Okay, so we're gonna start by throwing our fish in the mix, I mean, in the egg right here. We'll bring it a little bit closer. And you don't really have to use egg wash, but I'm thinking it'll make it stick a little bit better. Get all the extra off, straight in the mixture. Make sure to push it down so you get it nice and coated. Like I said, this is just, ooh, that looks good. This is just breadcrumbs and uh, Parmesan, and then we also put salt and pepper in here. We put the, the seasoning. And that right there looks pretty awesome. Let me just throw it on our, our skillet right here, put a little bit of oil on the bottom, and then we're just gonna repeat that with every single piece. And uh, then it's good to go in the oven. done here as you can see nice and good we're gonna get a little bit of lemon just a few drops over each one give it that freshness that citrus not much okay and then we're gonna throw it in the oven and the oven is at 425 cooking them very quick and that'll get that nice crust on it so put in the oven set the timer for 10 minutes although it'll probably take 15 to 20 set it for 10 and we'll come back and check it all right, so to go with our fish, we're gonna cook a little bit of asparagus. So all we're gonna do, is we got some melted butter in here. Throw in some garlic. Not a crazy amount, but a little bit. A little bit of lemon. Okay. All right, now we're gonna take our asparagus. It's not all gonna fit in here, but a lot of it will. That much is good. And then we're using a salt it up. So, kosher salt, big plate. Share us with it because it's all gonna fall off. Now we're gonna let that cook for a few minutes until it gets nice, soft, maybe a little bit of char on the sides of it. And then, ooh, style. And then we're ready to eat. The fish has been going for 10 minutes. It is definitely not done. Like I said, it's probably gonna take 15 to 20. But we're gonna take it out for just a second already starting to crisp up on top. And we're gonna add the garlic and lemon zest. So some people add this at different times. I honestly have no idea when. So that's why I'm just adding it now and it's gonna turn out good, guaranteed. Okay, so a bunch of garlic. Now whenever we put it back in, it'll give time for this garlic to crisp up. Okay, and then lemon zest. And lemon zest is pretty strong, so you don't need much. Nice and spread around. A little more garlic, lemony. Really just anything, it doesn't have to be too pretty. Okay. Now we put this back in for an additional five to 10 minutes. And all that's gonna to come together and it's gonna to be amazing. Meanwhile, you can come over and look at the asparagus. Get in there, a couple more minutes on this, take it off and uh, then we're gonna plate it all for y'all. Right, the asparagus is done here. Um, some pieces are a little bit charred, but that's exactly what we want on the tips. We're gonna move it off the heat. Go ahead and add another half of the lemon. Finish it off. And then we'll let that sit there and cool. Our fish is almost done. I accidentally turned the oven off last time we checked it. So I restarted the oven and you know, I don't know how that's gonna turn out. We're giving, we're gonna give it about another like five or six minutes. It's looking good. So it should be done pretty soon. All right, our fish is done over here. I'm gonna pull it out right now. Looks pretty good to me. And all we do to finish it off, give it a little bit of color. You can use parsley for this. Um, personally, I just like green onions, they taste great, so. 
throw it on there, make it look fancy. And then, of course, lemon. And that right there is garlic parmesan crusted flounder. We're gonna put it on the plates, and then we're gonna sit down and eat this and uh, tell you how good it is. Okay, we got our awesome plate right here. Looking pretty fresh. We're gonna squeeze the lemon over it. Even more lemon. And give it a taste. So, we'll go right here. Ooh, look at that. Perfect. So it's pretty good. Um, the fish is a little bit dry. We cooked it a little long because we had that oven malfunction. So I didn't, and I forgot to set the timer. So it probably cooks about five minutes too long, but it's pretty good. And then uh, the crunchiness of the outside is not as crunchy as I would like, but uh, it's decent. I'd make it again, make it better next time, but definitely something to give a try, make it your own way, however you like it. And uh, thank you all for watching today. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, and share to everyone you know, please. And um, that's pretty much it. That's all we have. Thank you all once again. Until next time, peace.